Everybody's Tyler here at the World Championships checking in with 1577. Steampunk, absolutely phenomenal team, multiple years. Winners of Israel DCMP this year, world finalists last year. Steampunk is the complete package. We'll take a look at the robot here. Awesome intake, I love it. Going through all their arm as well too. Some awesome positional control and a lot of interesting programming that goes into Steampunk. I can't wait to talk more about this robot, what they have to bring here and charge it up, coming up on Behind the Bumpers. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. Or let's talk about the uh, intake on your robot. I love wide intakes on robots uh, as we go through here. So talk to me about uh, for 1577, uh, why did you choose this route? How it's been working out for you? And tell us more about it. Yeah, sure. So basically in our first district, we didn't have this intake and we saw that we lost a lot of points because we couldn't get cones off the ground. Sure. That were standing. So we took inspiration from team 95, the grasshoppers, and made this intake. Our goal with this was to make an, int an intake that's fast, can, sen can center the cone, and is lightweight. So as you can see, the intake can move pretty easily back and forth. Um, also, we made uh, our axis of rotation low to the ground. So when the intake gets hit, it, it comes back up. So it doesn't break. Um, basically, our intake takes a cone, never shot, takes a cone by its square side in, in between these two rollers. This is the P PVC pipe, it's just meant to keep the cone in and let it glide. This mechanism and omni mills meant to center the cone to here, where basically the intake can come back up and the arm can grab it. During, so you said this was added on. Did you have anything before that no. or were you doing any sort of floor intake before that? No, we just said uh, standing up cones with our draper. No, if the cone was fallen, we couldn't pick it. Sure. And what have you noticed uh, here at the World Championship? How's that been working out for you? Uh, it's been working out really great. We can do a lot more points to do with that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's cool to see the iterations uh, go on the robot uh, as well, too. As we continue up on here, uh, Shep, you're going to talk more about the uh, arm and what's gone into that. Um, I love the overall design. You know, watching you, even from your first uh, district event all the way through, your cycle times have been so good. Uh, so I want to hear more about how did you come up with this uh, process and any other details you'd like to add for it? Um, sure. So basically, our arm here consists of two degrees of freedom. It can rotate both forwards and backwards and extend in and out. Um, let's just start from the bottom down. Sure. We wanted to keep a, we tried to minimize our center of gravity with this whole, um, this whole subsystem. So our transmission is placed a bit lower and then we connect it all with a chain to the top. Um, because of the whole gear ratio and the chain, and there is some backlash. So in order to control that, we do have an absolute encoder here that meshes into the sprocket here. So that way we can always get the true angle of our arm. Um, the reason we had to do that is our arm, uh, these two plates basically sit on bearings on a fixed shaft. So we couldn't connect the encoder there. Um, basically, how we then extend the arm, we have a double sprocket down here that meshes into two rows of holes in this extrusion. Um, that's the arm. And then if we move over to our intake here, um, it's a pretty simple intake. It consists of two sets of wheels. Basically for cones, the uh, the pointy end just comes up right through there and uh, basically sits between them two. And cubes just kind of get pinched by the corner or its face. Um, one of the special things about our intake and generally when we work with uh, polycarb is in order for um, bearings not to pop out, we do use two shoulder bearings that sit right next to each other. So that way the inner rings that rotate touch each other and basically there isn't any room for the bearing to escape and there is no added friction to the system. 
Something I want to ask you on your, your whole uh, superstructure here. When you were coming up with a design for all this, because we didn't have this in this uh, intake here, uh, talk to me more about like the design of uh, having like the super wide base here. But then, you know, this area here, it's not too big, right? So um, why go with a smaller area here versus like a super wide intake here? Um, one of the reasons is in one of our first versions and prototypes, we did have a spindixer on the bot. Oh, okay. Um, so we needed an intake narrow enough to fit into there. And after that, we saw that we didn't really need to widen the intake to collect cubes and cones with the end with the gripper. It is wide enough and our driver can uh, use it quite efficiently. And for the handoff sequence with the intake, there, there isn't really a problem because the intake does center the game piece. Yeah. Um, we added these two um, extrusions up top and connecting them basically just to give the whole uh, arm here a bit more of more stability and uh, that's pretty much it. I mean, it's been working out great. So I'd just love to hear some of the reasoning behind that. It's cool to hear that uh, you had an initial concept of a Spindexer. Let's talk some more about that handoff as well too. Uh, Ido, you're gonna be talking more about the arm and the handoff and some of the programming and uh, controls that go behind that. So talk to me more about it. And we'd love to see a little bit of a demo of it working too. Yeah, sure. So what we do to move the arm is we have a set of safe waypoints all along the way throughout the grid where the arm can go move ar around precisely and not hit the grid itself. So if we can see a little demonstration of level two of the grid. Yeah, so this was the handoff. Uh, we'll see now uh, level two. So I, I know, by the way, I wrote this quick on your handoff. Uh, before we came in here, you were doing some modifications to try to get that optimized a bit more on your constant four spring. Talk to me a little bit about what you've been changing for that. Yeah, so before you came, we changed the intake to a different one, so it would be easier for us to grab cones. And in uh, so we had to move the angle of the handoff a bit far, further back because the cones weren't hitting the cone. The cones weren't hitting in the gripper. So if we can see it again, please. And as, like I said, your cycle times have been so good on that. Uh, I'd love to hear a little more about some of your autonomous uh, that you've been doing as well too, uh, Nebo. And uh, just overall, anything else from programming that you want to wrap up with on your robot too? Yeah, of course. Um, well, we have a few different autos. We have, from the open side of the charging station, we have a two and a half auto, which means we score two game pieces and collect one. From the charging station, we have uh, one piece auto and balancing, which means, uh, sorry, one, one and a half piece auto, which sure. means we put a, put a game piece on, go over the charging station, collect a game piece, go back to the charging station and balance. And from the uh, cable protector side, we have a two piece auto, which we put the game piece, go collect one and put it back on. Um, another thing about, uh, about uh, the, sorry. Another thing about the code is we have a path generation during the uh, the teleop, tele um, where we give the swerve a point in the in the field and he knows how to drive there. Um, and lastly, I know you want to talk a little about your uh, custom dashboard and what you were doing yeah. for that. Yeah, uh, yeah. So we'll bring that bring that up here so we can take a look and just kind of walk me through a couple things on that as we wrap yeah. up on your team. This is our dashboard. Uh, from here. The drivers can see the level they pick. So our operator picks a level with these with these three buttons and a game piece with these two. And then the driver only need to press and the open button for the arm to open to the wanted position. And then the eject to eject the cone. Um, so here they can see and check if they if check what uh, what it, the game piece was. Here we can choose the autonomous. We want to run, um, and another another uh, another stuff we have is the is this the values tab is where we can change the position of every set point in the field. So if level two, if the set point for level two, for example, is not is not the in the right position and it is missing, instead of losing the match and returning to the pit and going to the field and trying again, going to the practice field. We can just change it from here 
in the middle of the match and then not lose the match and not do anything else. So we can complete it. Uh, we can do it real in real time. I love having all the custom and the, the features to be able to do something like that. Steampunk, you've been looking absolutely phenomenal here. We wish you best of luck here at the World Championships. But also, thanks a lot for being an inspiration to other teams all around the world. You build an absolutely incredible robot, and it impacts all the other teams that see this are inspired to do better. So thank you so much, and good luck the rest of the way to you. This video on First Updates Now is made possible by viewers like you and also the following sponsors. If your team is using SOLIDWORKS, make sure you log into the 3D Experience platform to gain access to tutorials, collaborate with other users, and download the charge up field and kit up parts. Go to SOLIDWORKS.com first and click on Log into 3D Experience platform to gain access. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and ring the bell to stay up to date on our new videos. Keep the conversation going and provide your input to our content. Watch our live shows at twitch.tv forward slash first updates now. Join our Discord at discord.gg forward slash first updates now and check out Fun FTC on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, and First Updates Now on Facebook, Instagram, TikTok, and Twitter.